people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. Yesterday, it was made official. Yesterday, it was announced that Sandy Ryan, reigning WBO welterweight champion, will be traveling to America to the top-ranked side of things to take on Michaela Mayer in what is a ballsy, albeit counterintuitive, move. In Honey Endicott, we're going to be seeing Puerto Rico's own Zander Zayas return to the ring, Brooklyn's own Bruce Carrington return to the ring. This is going down at the Hulu Theater in New York. The strategic placement of a Puerto Rican and a Brooklyn Knight on the Endicott of this show provides assurances that they'll put some asses in some seats. That was smart. And in the main event, Sandy Ryan, the away fighter and the traveling champion, will be defending her WBO title. Sandy Ryan is 31, whereas Michaela Mayer is 34, though she doesn't look it. Neither of them do. Sandy doesn't look like she's a day over 24. Michaela looks like she's still in her 20s. In terms of height and length, their physical dimensions, they're very similar. They're both long and limber fighters, but Sandy Ryan is the naturally bigger fighter, the beefier fighter, whereas Michaela is noticeably leaner, sporting a professional record of 19 wins with two losses, no draws, five knockouts, having never been knocked out in 21 professional bouts. Experience is definitely on Michaela Mayer's side. She's been a professional boxer longer, had a lot more fights than Sandy Ryan. More fights, more rounds in the bank. And in a manner of speaking, she will have home field advantage. No, Michaela's not from New York. She's from the West Coast. But the fight is happening in America. It's on U.S. soil, and she's the house fighter. So she will have that working for her. Sandy Ryan, the reigning champion, the defending champion, the traveling champion, sports professional record of seven wins with one loss, one draw, three knockouts, having never been knocked out in nine professional bouts. Considerably less fights than Michaela Mayer has had less rounds in the bank. There's a bit of backstory here. You used to see Kay Karoma in Michaela Mayer's corner. You used to see him there up until he decided to start working with Sandy. And I guess that Michaela Mayer didn't like that because he's not with Michaela anymore. He used to be part of her team, but not anymore. Now he's part of Sandy's team. Sandy, Sandy Ryan, who last saw action earlier this year in March when she stopped Terry Harper. Before that, she fought two times last year. She's already fought once, this one, so she has seen action within the last 12 months, and there's no ring rust, the cobwebs, that she needs to shake off. She's gonna win a fight. Michaela Mayer's gonna win a fight. Michaela Mayer is gonna win a points decision against Sandy Ryan because she is a more experienced fighter than Sandy Ryan with more rounds in the bank and more ways of fighting a fight. I believe that Michaela Mayer is going to win a points decision against Sandy Ryan, keeping it long and loose and limber, boxing from the outside, and asserting herself mid-range to inside. Unlike Terry Harper, she's not going to get overpowered in the pocket. I don't think. I've been watching Michaela Mayer's career ever since she went pro, and I've seldom ever seen this fighter hurt rattled, buzzed. She's never been down. She's never been knocked down. Let alone knocked out. The culmination of her experiences has hardened her and made her tough. She's a tough cookie. She's a tough broad. Adaptable. And I think winning this fight is contingent upon a good balance of offense and defense. Boxing when you need to and punching when you need to. She's gonna move and punch. Stay behind the straight punches though because Sandy Ryan is eye level to Michaela and a physically imposing fighter, an aggressive fighter, a persistent fighter. Michaela's not gonna be able to keep her out all night. That's where the exchanges are going to happen. I see Michaela Mayer interrupting Sandy Ryan's rhythm with the jab. As Sandy Ryan tries to amass momentum, come forward and put punches together, Michaela's going to move. Michaela's going to box. Stick the jab out there. Remember that you're more susceptible to punches when you're the one coming forward. And in this fight, in all likelihood, it's going to be Sandy coming forward. It is. Being aggressive. While Michaela hangs back, stays behind the jab, the straight punches. Because they're eye level to each other, and they're both 
long and limber fighters, Michaela doesn't need to be right up on Sandy Ryan to touch her, to touch her with the straight shots. Sandy will be the biggest and the strongest fighter that Michaela Mayer will have fought, but she's also a very big target. I also happen to think, even though she's one or two years older than Sandy, she's faster. Faster on her feet, with faster hands, quicker to the draw! Movement and straight punches win Michaela Mayer the fight. Movement, straight punches, and durability. Being able to take whatever gets in. I won't begrudge Sandy Ryan her ballsiness and her ambition, thinking that she can win on foreign soil in hostile territory. I don't hold that against her, but I do think it's going to backfire. You know, unless she can go in there and take it out of the judges' hands. Stop Michaela Mayer, how she stopped Terry Harper. She don't win this fight. I think Michaela out-hustles her. I think Michaela Mayer shakes and bakes her and wins a points decision, becoming WBO champion. Michaela Mayer on points is the pick, and we'll talk more about the fight as the fight date approaches. Men's super middleweight news at the kickoff press conference yesterday for Canelo versus Berlanga. Edgar Berlanga says Benavidez doesn't sell, Morel doesn't sell, I have superstar status. You are delusional. Edgar Berlanga had a snappy response to anyone questioning why he got the assignment to face Canelo in September and the more decorated David Benavidez and the undefeated powerhouse David Morel did not. Benavidez doesn't sell. Morel doesn't sell. They don't have the superstar status I have. A bejeweled Berlanga told boxing scene in his dressing room on Monday, just minutes before the start of his press conference in Midtown Manhattan with Canelo. There's a grain of truth in that lie. That David Morrell doesn't sell, he doesn't, he's an undercard fighter. David Benavidez, he doesn't sell much either. He's been on pay-per-view two times, two times consecutively, and he didn't sell nothing. So much so, he's back to fighting on undercards. He was on Javante's undercard. He doesn't sell shit. They don't have that power. I have a country behind me. I have Puerto Rico behind me. And I got the hip-hop culture behind me. I know that's why Canelo picked me. Because we're going to sell, but we're also going to fight, and it's going to be a good fight. Picked you because you suck. You see... <laughs> David Morrell doesn't sell, that's true. David Benavidez, he doesn't sell much either. But if it were Canelo versus Benavidez, instead of Canelo versus Berlanga, that would actually do better business than this fight is about to do, it would. Even though David doesn't sell? Not by himself, no, but if you add him to a Canelo Alvarez fight, there's more of a grassroots demand for Canelo versus Benavidez than Canelo versus Berlanga. Nobody was asking for Canelo versus Berlanga besides Edgar Berlanga. He sucks. Canelo will defend his three super middleweight titles against Berlanga next month at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas to top a PBC pay-per-view on Prime on a Mexican Independence Day weekend. Berlanga 27 was in attendance May 4th when Canelo dropped and decisioned a game Jaime Munguia in Vegas. That was Canelo's fourth straight win that went the distance, causing some to wonder if Canelo may have lost a step. Berlanga doesn't think that's the case. I don't see no decline in Canelo. Berlanga told boxing scene, Canelo was Canelo. Munguia is a guy who throws a lot of punches. How is a guy who resorted to biting Romer and Gulo prattling on about IQ, using IQ? Ring savvy, ring craft. What ring craft was it that got him knocked down by Coceres? Gun shy with rolls. Gun shy with Angulo. Frustrated so much so, he actually bit the guy. But Edgar continued, I think Canelo will be in the best shape, in the best form for this fight, and it's going to be fireworks that weekend. Berlanga, the WBA's number one one ranked mandatory contender last saw action this past February when he stopped previously undefeated Pedraig McCrory in the sixth round for his first stoppage in five fights. Berlanga believes he's still an unfinished product who hasn't scraped the ceiling of his potential. What potential? The truth is that the only reason Edgar got the fight over David Morrell and over David Benavidez is because Edgar sucks. And everybody knows Edgar sucks. Canelo's fans and Canelo's critics alike agree on one thing. This guy sucks. He's trash. Garbage. And that's why they picked him. You can sell the fight with the Puerto Rico versus Mexico angle during a Mexican holiday, so it's good for some money, but as far as ability and why he actually got the fight, he got the fight because he's terrible. He says that he's a star. Buddy, you've only ever fought at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. You never filled out the big room because who are you going to fill it out with? Not a star. So I guess a part of being a professional boxer and trying to make it is faking it until you make it. Saying things that 
everybody knows aren't true, but one day you hope they will be, that you're a star now when you're not. No. But maybe if you beat Canelo. You're not gonna beat Canelo. Everybody's talking about how it's been a while since Canelo Alvarez knocked somebody out, that he hasn't knocked somebody out since he knocked out Caleb Plant, then unbeaten for the undisputed crown at this weight, and whether or not that's a sign that he's starting to slip. Well, he's about to knock out Edgar. I think he's about to knock out Edgar Berlanga. Who's bigger than Canelo, but not better. Better at what? What's dangerous about me is that I'm not the same fighter that I was for my last fight, he said. I'm still a mystery to Canelo. Every fight I'm getting better and better. These guys at that level, they plateau, they stay stagnant. Me, I'm 27 years old, but I'm still a sponge in a gym and I'm still growing and I'm still not at my full potential. I'm going to give everything I've got and make history on September 14th, but everything you've got ain't a lot. You ain't been built. You don't have the experience, that goes without saying, the ability, the raw ability, the talent. You know, because what some guys lack in experience, they can make up for in talent. That don't apply to Edgar Berlanga. You don't think you're being a little bit harsh on this kid? There's not a nice way for me to say any of this. He only got the fight because of how good he isn't, not how good he is. And underneath it all, I think he knows that, but he's happy anyway, because if nothing else, he can lose to Canelo and get paid. And then afterwards say, well, there's no shame in me losing to Canelo Alvarez. He's pound for pound. He was undisputed. Built-in excuses. Yeah, you're fighting Canelo, but it's not because he's a good fighter or because he's pound for pound or any of those things. No, you didn't avoid the vast majority of solid fighters because you're in the business of fighting solid fighters. You're not. You don't fight good fighters. And you're only fighting this one for the check. What do you have to do to be victorious? Okay. I mean, he's got to be able to use boxing skills he doesn't have have a team that he doesn't have and you know the experience that he doesn't have there's a lot of agenda driven commentary in the sport of boxing but that wasn't it no, that was no agenda. That's the reality of Edgar Berlanga. You didn't circumvent all the solid fighters at this weight because of what a solid fighter you are. It's just like Caleb Plant said. He's got to use the ring IQ that he doesn't have, the experience that he doesn't have, and the chin that he doesn't have. Doesn't have it. With the country of Puerto Rico behind him, Edgar Berlanga, if he actually had more ability, he could be a star. He would be if he were fighting the solid fighters at this weight and beating the solid fighters at this weight. But look at how they've matched him. Top rank cut this guy because he wants to be paid like a superstar for fighting nobodies. And why is he fighting nobodies? You're a star and you're so goddamn good, the matchmaking would have been a lot more ambitious by now. He's 27. You know who Canelo was fighting at 27 years old? The same age that Edgar is now. You know who he was fighting? Gennady Golovkin. By the time Canelo Alvarez was 27, he had already shared the ring with Floyd Mayweather, Austin Trout, Arislandi Lara, Miguel Cotto, and Gennady Golovkin. All by age 27, this is who you're about to fight. And who have you fought? so far. Edgar, in this situation, is best described as a snack on the run, a meal to go for Canelo Alvarez before he flies off to Japan and fights whoever he's going to fight over there. Airline peanuts. A hot dog at Times Square. Come on. And he's big. Yeah, he's big. He can punch a little bit. But there are a lot of big guys at 168 that can punch a little bit. Who at 168 would Edgar Berlanga beat? Not Jaime Munguia. Not Christian Mabili. Not Diego Pacheco. No. Not Bektamir Melenkuziev. I don't think. I don't even think he would beat Bektamir Melenkuziev. Frankly, I don't know that he would beat Gabriel Rosado. William Skull. Gun to your head. Who would you pick Edgar Berlanga to beat at 168 pounds? Because I can't think of anybody. Nobody's solid. And that's why he's here. That's why they picked him. Because he isn't very good. This is easy money. Very easy money for Canelo Alvarez. If the money is right, I'm, I'm in. Because, you know, I don't like to fight guys like, like Crawford because he move a lot and the fight is not that great. Mm -hmm. I, I saw Crawford the last... Uh, uh, the last fight and he don't, he don't move uh, uh, that much now so mm -hmm. yeah is if the money is right I'm so canelo alvarez has been doing the rounds on the popular podcasts to sell the fight i just talked about the edgar berlanga fight and one soundbite has gotten a lot of people's attention that canelo alvarez doesn't really like fighting movers movers like terence crawford that if they make it worth his while offer him the kind of money that satisfies him he'll take the fight but in a very general sense he doesn't like movers and on that premise some are criticizing him a regular on the boxing voice tip bayless said canelo openly says he doesn't like to fight people like terence crawford because they move a lot 
It's a clear indication that he ducked Demetrius Andre. A piece of crap. Boxing fans are a real stubborn bunch. They never like admitting that they're wrong, that they backed the wrong horse. There is absolutely nothing to indicate that Demetrius Andre is someone that Canelo has to avoid because that guy sucks. Across two, three weight classes, he has no signature victories over no solid fighters. And he's a quitter. And a lot of American boxing fans have an affinity for propping up these hype jobs these hyped up souped up fighters for no reason other than one or two things they might have in common with them yeah but canelo did say he doesn't like movers yeah and i could tell you i don't like having to change a flat tire that doesn't mean i can't you've been living under a rock while canelo alvarez may not like having to pin down a moving target that doesn't mean that he can't that doesn't mean that he hasn't are you paying attention to how many Movers. movement oriented fighters he's already fought a mover in austin trout in eris Londi lara what would a daniel jacobs did a lot of moving when canelo alvarez fought him that was at 160 at 168 he fought both caleb plant and Billy Joe Saunders. Those were movers. Jermel Charlo was a mover. And every single one of those aforementioned fighters has a better resume, better career scalps than Demetrius Andre. so much so that they are better fighters. All of them are better fighters than Demetrius Andre. so much so that claiming Canelo avoided this hype job? Are you nuts? That guy sucks. You just don't want to admit it. You don't want to admit you were wrong about him. I don't like talking to people in boxing. I really don't like talking to people in boxing because you Usually what it is is, oh, you know the guy. He took a picture with you. Gave you an autograph, and maybe he lived in your neighborhood a couple of years ago. You used to sit behind him in math class. It's always something stupid. Something asinine. It's wide-eyed fanboyism for what is one of the most unremarkable boxing careers for a multi-weight champion. There is nothing memorable about Demetrius Andrade's career, his resume, and I don't think it's because of how great he is. It's because of how great he isn't. I have no doubts that Canelo doesn't like facing movers, and in some instances, runners. Runners, like Jermel Charlo, who did very little fighting and did a lot more running. Why would he favor that? Why would he like that? Talk all that goddamn shit to get the fight for years and years and years, just so that when you get it, you don't want to stand and fight. You want to run. So that a bunch of bozos online can call that the sweet science. But do you know why you can't judge Canelo harshly for what he said about movers and how he doesn't like to fight movers? It's because in spite of not liking it, he still does it. He still did it. Lara was a mover. Trout was a mover. Jacobs was a mover. Plant was a mover. Saunders was a mover. Hell, even Bevel. He's fought a lot of moving targets for a guy who doesn't even like fighting moving targets. He's fought quite a few already. And Canelo ain't you. You. The way you're subject to what somebody else wants. No, for years now, Canelo Alvarez fights who he wants to fight. So even though he doesn't like fighting movers, he still chose to fight them. So what are you really complaining about? That the souped up hype job you got behind didn't live up to your expectations? Unimportant people backing unimportant boxes. Fuck off. There's this sentiment in some circles here in the United States, small ones, that the American boxer is so slick and so crafty. Bullshit. For no reason other than he's the American boxer. Bullshit. Those days are over, my friend. The sport is now more open to the world and all the fighters in it, more so now, than in any previous era of boxing. What's going on is, you identify with some of these souped up hype jobs. You look at them as an extension of yourself. But let me tell you something, there's nothing special about them like there's nothing special about you. <laughs>